This is less a question than an observation. A huge part of what's disappointing about a lot of these adaptations, including the Greta Gerwig one, is that it's 2020 now and folks don't want to talk about the fact that a huge part of the bear hate stems from fat phobia. And honestly, that brilliant, goofy, nerdy people don't make romantic leads. And I'm pretty sure Louisa May Alcott would agree. I always imagine someone with maybe Sean Astin's build playing the part. This next thing that I'm going to say, it's legitimate. You can find most Louisa May Alcott novels from public domain, so you can check this out. In every single Louisa May Alcott novel, where the Louisa type of protagonist falls in love or marries the romantic partner, they always look the same. They all have the same body type. They're all tall and heavily built. One of Friedrich's models was the German poet Goethe. And if you look at pictures of Goethe, he's this middle-aged man with broad shoulders and very tall and, you know, heavily built. And all Louisa May Alcott's romantic heroes look like that. Some of them have beards, some of them don't. And surprisingly, many of them speak with German accents. John Surrey, who was a German soldier that Louisa nursed in the war, he was tall and a bit stout, with a brown beard. Louisa wrote to her diary that she found him very handsome and attractive. And Adam in moods and David in work. The female protagonist is always fixated to their looks and their quote-unquote manliness. And when Friedrich becomes Joe's sexual awakening, she pays attention to his big hands and his big feet. And she's really lusty over him. In Joe's boys, when Dan comes back to Plumfield, he has grown a beard. For those of you who have not read uh, Joe's boys, Dan was one of Joe's and Friedrich's students. When he comes back, he asks Joe if he should shave the beard off. And Joe is like, don't do that. It makes you look so manly and handsome. And it is so funny because both Friedrich and Dan are based on Henry Taro. Mackin Rosenblum, he also has the same body type. He's blonde and he's younger. In Eight Cousins, where he's preteen, he's described to be a bit choppy. But then in Rosenblum, Mac has a huge growth spurt. And suddenly he's taller and he got broad shoulders. And Rose, surprise begins to see him more attractive and all these men are described to have blue eyes which is an interesting detail since Henry Thoreau had blue eyes. In a way Louisa she was attracted to the alpha male. Her ideal man always looks very masculine but they are all very gentle by nature. To Louisa man being heavily built meant that they were big and strong and they can take care of themselves and other people. People like Red Arcuri complaining about body type it's very shallow. People can hire conventionally good-looking actors to play Fritz, like Rosanna Brassi and Luis Garrel, but it never erases the problem that Joe is never attracted to Laurie and Laurie's looks and Laurie's character arc and the way his and Joe's relationship has these toxic elements, it's always missing. And all that explains why Joe dumps him in the first place. Alpha male for Louisa was also someone who could support their writing, which is what Friedrich does. He encourages her to find her own writing style. There's also some criticism over the skinny looking guys in Little Woman. Nat and Laurie are skinny and pretty, more effeminate, and the narrator occasionally criticizes their overly emotional nature. Like Laurie, Laurie is often overly dramatic. And Nat, he's more of a daydreamer. So these both guys are very sensitive. Which raises an interesting question if part of that is narrator's dislike over femininity because in the novel, one of Joe's more masculine qualities is that she denies her own vulnerability, which is why I think her arc with Frederick was so important. Because the more she tried to deny her vulnerability, the more she felt lost. So with Frederick, she could she could find a balance. In some ways, Louisa connected men being skinny to non-productivity. In Joe's boys, Meg and Joe don't want Daisy to marry Nat because they think he's such a daydreamer. Then he travels to Germany to study music, and when he comes back to Concord, he's more heavily built. It's really funny because Meg and Joe are like, wow, he looks much better now. I don't personally share Lucy's views on skinny guys not being productive, but maybe it's based on her own experiences since Julian Hartron and Adi Wisniewski, who were real-life lorries, they were pretty, but they weren't always very productive and didn't really live up to Lucy's standards. In Finland, we have this expression, Uus avuton, which means an adult who doesn't know how to be an adult. And Laurie and Nat, they are this type of characters. They need a strong female guide 
like Amy or Daisy, to inspire them to grow and take control of their lives. To Louis, the alpha male is a man who combines the masculine and the feminine energy together in a balanced and effective way. Strong but kind, confident but humble. I don't really know any other writer who has such a clear idea what her ideal man is like. It has a lot to do with taste, but I also think Louis' love for quote-unquote masculine men who were also intellectual was connected to her own values. She was drawn to men who possessed tender masculinity. I read once that Louisa gave Frederick elements of European men that she wished that more American men would have. I think there might be some truth to that. I grew up watching lots of you know, Scandinavian film productions like Astrid Lindgren adaptations. And there's lots of male characters that look very masculine or physically strong male characters. But they are passionate and romantic with their partners and they love their kids. So if you know someone who complains about Frederick's looks, Louisa wrote Frederick to be her own ideal man. So if someone has problems with that, they don't really understand the author. When Louisa was asked to write Little Woman, she hesitated because her closest friends were all boys and then her sisters. Knowing Louisa's love for men and boys and masculinity, it makes a lot of sense that the men who she was attracted to also looked that way. I mean, there has been lots of research on Louisa's identification to masculinity. And yes, there is a lot of that in Little Woman, but in a lot of ways, Jo is also a very feminine character in the way she reads romance novels. And when she falls in love, she dreams about marriage and starting a family. And she's very maternal, which is something that came naturally to her. 